and today we are going to be taking a look at another shotgun that I was actually sent uh, was actually sent to me by Oswu. Um, funny story behind how I actually got this one. Uh, so after I had bought the other shotgun that I reviewed in the last video, I wanted to get more shells for it because this thing is fun. I'm really enjoying it. I have plans for it and I want more ammo for it, basically. Um, so I reached out to the company on Amazon and I said, hey, uh, is there any way for me to purchase more shells for this particular item that I had just purchased? Uh, I wanted to review it for my YouTube channel. I've already lost one of the shells. I would like to get more of these. How can I give you money so that I could buy just some shells? Their response was, what's your YouTube channel? So I sent them the URL. They checked it out. And I asked them, like, so is there any way I can get more shells? Oh, we got something better. We're going to send you something that uses the same shells, so this way you'll have more shells. And it's like, okay, cool, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm not going to turn away free stuff, um, but I would like to buy more shells. Yeah, exactly. So, um... Thankfully, uh, Jade's helping me out in that department, so thank you, Jade. Hopefully those will work out, and I can't wait to get those. Um, but yeah, so the what they wound up sending me was this, uh, which is a sawed-off shotgun-style uh, foam dart blaster. Now, this particular one has been around for a while. I wasn't 100% sure if this was uh, maybe Oswu's take on it or something, but... Uh, doing a little bit of due diligence, uh, which I will get to in my final thoughts. Uh, I happen to actually see this particular design reviewed by Airsoft Mike a couple, uh, about a year ago. So, and Oswu said they just were getting these in in May. So, um, yeah, I don't. I think again, it's just re, re, it's just uh, reselling the. You know, they're resellers. So, but you know, that's fine. I. I'm not judging for that, but it also explains why maybe I haven't gotten an answer on why I can't get more shells from them. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so as with any review I do on my channel, whether it's something I paid for or I am sent, uh, we are going to go over the aesthetics of this blaster, what it comes with, how this thing works. We're going to take a look at the insides of it to see the little goodies that are... Uh, below the shell, and then I will give you my final thoughts on this thing. So, going over the aesthetics of this blaster, uh, color scheme-wise, it is actually very, very close to what the full shotgun that I reviewed in my last video uh, was. Uh, you have white barrels, uh, you do have a black Picatinny rail, and a black, I guess you can kind of say, grip area. Um, it's kind of small, you're wrapping around your hands around the barrel, but this is normally where you kind of grip it. Uh, you also have that blue plastic for the back end of the blaster, and it does have that same kind of rubbery feel to it that the other one had, and I, I like that. I don't know if it's just the way they molded the plastic or if it's a coating that they actually do put on it, um, but yeah, it's, it is nice. It gives it a little bit of a tactile feel to it other than just, you know, feeling that ABS plastic. So I do like that um, aesthetic feel of it. Uh, you also do have a little bit of um, flash on it, I guess you could say. Uh, but on the barrels, it says shooting soft bullet launcher, and it does say it on both barrels, as well as this neat little, or actually very cool, uh, I think cool, uh, wolf head design on it and it is on both sides as well outside of that i really there are no other markings on it uh there isn't an, even a i can't even find a made in china on this or anything um yeah so that's kind of interesting oh uh also on the prime the uh priming pull here it's got a little eight ball sticker on it and I'll say this much, like, the wolf head, fine, whatever, you can call it the lone wolf or whatever, but the random 8-ball sticker, though, that it is exactly that. To me, that just seems random. This is sounding very nitpicky, but especially just that it's there. It's like somebody just, like, had it on their hand and was like, 
there you go. Um, personally, I think it would have looked maybe a little better on the bottom of it. But yeah, just like randomly put there, it's like, I don't know if that's supposed to be aesthetic or if this was inspector number eight. Um, you know, but that's just me. So, um, besides the blaster and this, this, the, this does come fully assembled. So you don't have to put anything together. It's when you take it out of the box, it is as is. Uh, so what you also get with this are six of these, uh, style shells. They're a little different than what the other shotgun has, and I will definitely be touching upon that later. Um, it doesn't have any posts or anything like that, so you can also fit half darts in here if you want. Uh, I have tested that, and it, they do work. You do get 20 of these particular style darts. There are no suction cup darts with this one. It's just these straight 20 FVJ darts. Um, and they're the same, it seems like it's the same foam as the other ones. It's the same light gray foam. Uh, but instead of blue tips, these are orange tips. Um, and we'll take a look at those later when we uh, go to the workbench as well. And then the final thing that this comes with is another faux red dot. Now, this one is honestly a little better than the other one. I mean, it still feels light as anything. So it still has that like kind of, I don't want to say cheap feel, but it has that kind of cheap feel to it. Uh, the one thing I do have to say that is nicer about it is, one, instead of a green um, light, it is actually red, so it actually does see a little better, or at least I think it does. Um, the other nice thing is the crosshairs are actually cut into the plastic, whereas the other one, it was like kind of weirdly molded on back. Um, but yeah, these are cut in, so it actually catches the light better, and also it because, I don't know if it's just because it's the red instead of the green, or if it's maybe just positioning the lens, but uh, the light is, of course, at the bottom here, um, right there. So the light is illuminating directly from the bottom of the lens, but you don't get that, like, giant distracting green um, illumination, like, shooting straight up the middle of it. Uh, so, yeah, it functionally it is nicer i still wouldn't trust one of these things for actual like use competitively uh but yeah there's that um also speaking of competitively this does work well again it's not a competition blaster though but the way this one works is slightly different from the other one as again you have a priming pull here so to prime it you just pull the weird eight ball grip and you prime your plunger now this does not go back up and you only fire you i'm not i'm like pretty sure you're only gonna have one plunger tube in here like this isn't priming both of them so but because this only has one uh plunger in it you don't have a dual stage trigger on it so when you pull the trigger you're only getting one shot out of it now, you can uh, fiddle with that a little bit with the switch on the back here. So, if you have the switch all the way to this side, you're only going to fire out of this barrel. If you happen to have it down dead center, you will fire both barrels. And all the way to the opposite side, you are firing the other barrel out. Um, and only that. You do have to prime for each shot. So, if you are firing the barrels individually, you would flip it to one side, prime, pull, and then for the other one, flip the switch all the way to the other side, prime, fire, and then you'd reload. And now to actually break this open, uh, you'll see in the trigger well, there's a little gold trigger. Um, I don't know why they decided to make that gold for aesthetics to make it uh, stand out differently from the actual trigger itself, whichever. But yet yeah, you press that, and that is actually what breaks open the barrel. So what you'll do is to fire it, you break the barrel open, you put your shells in, and this is something I just wanted to point out because it's a little different than what would be, I guess you could say, normal, uh, where Busby Blaster, the over-under or the side-by-side, -side, you'd push the barrels or the shells in individually into the barrel, and you'd have to see both of them. Uh, same thing with the full shotgun that I uh, just reviewed. 
again, you have to push the shells in individually. This one's a little different in that you can see they're both sticking out because I haven't like primed the ejection uh, system yet. But when I push one side in, it actually primes both sides of it and it doesn't matter which side you do. Um, so yeah, this is the other barrel. Again, same thing. And as I was saying earlier, there was like a little bit of a wobble. I wasn't sure if it was a the missing because um, it wasn't loaded. Yeah, that what with the shells in there, the wobble's gone. Uh, but yeah, so you, once your shells are loaded, you set how you want to fire it. Pull the plunger, fire, and there you go. And then you push it to release your shells, and then you just reload. So. That's it for now. So, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see is how this is set up because uh, I'm just curious on the the way it switches because I know there's only one plunger in here, uh, which is going to make me kind of consider a couple of things when I give my final thoughts. So let's just go take a look at the insides of this, see what we're working with here. Okay, so we are opening this up, um, but before we do that, I wanted to just showcase something with the darts that come with this thing that are a little different. Besides the fact that the shells between my full size shotgun and this um, may look very similar. They are actually different sized and I wanna get this on camera. So I have my trusty caliper here. These are the shells for the full size shotgun, the double barrel. And they are 17.9 millimeters in diameter. And these particular shells are 18.8 .8 millimeters in diameter. So they are two totally different shells. It may only be by a millimeter, but these will not load into the other shotgun, which greatly disappoints me because what also really makes me mad is I have 10 of these particular shells and these I happen to be able to order, uh, which were for my pump action shotgun that Kleine gave me last year at End War. These shells are 19.7 millimeters in diameter. So these shells won't work in either one of them either. So I have three shell ejecting shotguns with three different size, that take three different size shells. So fun. Um, but getting into the darts, the darts are also a different size. This blue dart with this uh, blue tip dart is one of the ones from the full length shotgun and these orange tipped ones are the ones that came with the sawed off. And you can tell they're ever so slightly shorter, which is like, oh, come on, really? And as I had mentioned before, they are FBJs. And as you can see there, they are the FBJs. Very little on the side, but with those two giant posts on there, there's no give in the tips, but I digress. So I've already opened this up for sake of time and here it is, which is exactly what I was figuring. Um, very, very similar to how the uh, Busby uh, double barrel shotguns work. You have the single plunger tube, which you could, if you wanted to, have linked in a string up here, which would have been just like the way Busby did it, but I can understand why doing it like this. Um, because it is easier, and when you do modify the Busby ones, normally it's very hard to re-loop all of that string, and they wind up just being becoming a pull like this. Uh, but yeah, you have your uh, barrel your uh, break action here. And then for those wondering what the hell this is, uh, <laughs> this is just a piece of metal. Yeah. This is a metal weight that is in the blaster. 
right here on the back end of it. So, yeah, that's the insides of this thing. Uh, and then you have your switch here that just switches where the air gets directed to. Um, but yeah, that's everything here. So I'm going to close this thing back up and then I'll give you my final thoughts on it. But anyway, my final thoughts on this. So I do want to address one elephant in the room regarding this particular design of blaster. Um, if anyone is familiar with the gecko, um, you know, it was designed by a community member who is pretty well, a very, very, very good designer when it comes to, uh, things like this. Um, if you know what the Lizzie is, you know, and let's just say same thing happened with this. Um, if you're curious to, as to what I'm talking about, uh, go take a look at the FOMA nature. Um, granted, there are, you know, it's kind of like a water under the bridge at this point for this, um, or at least as I have been told, but I did want to address that elephant. Um, so, you know, reminder, I did not pay for this. This was sent to me for review. So, um, that aside, I have to say this isn't terrible. Um, and it, it doesn't pay me to say that, but there are things that go against this that could have been addressed if it wasn't for the fact that this was Gecko. Because with what my idea is for my full-length shotgun, you could have easily have implemented into this thing. Um, and by that, I mean when you break open the barrels to load the shells, having that priming bar here so that you can push it down all the way and then load in or um, load two individual uh, plunger tubes instead of the, just the one massive plunger with the plunger pommel here. Uh, it took me a while to remember what the hell I wanted to call this thing. Uh, you also would have been able to eliminate the switch here at that point and actually have implemented the dual stage trigger on this. Uh, but also at that point, it would have been at least, to me, a bit more functionally pleasing. Because um, while I do like the little trigger in there to pop open the, uh, the breech, that's not, you know, that's neither here nor there. That's actually a very nice convenient feature rather than a switch on top here to break it open. Um, but I would have liked that because this way I didn't ha I wouldn't have to worry about priming each shot, uh, essentially making this, sh this thing a one shot rather than a shotgun. Um, it also would have eliminated having to select the barrels. It would just be, you know, trigger one is this, trigger two is that. You pull both down, you, fu you fire both of them, and then, you know, about your uncle and all. Um, as I mentioned earlier, link for this will be down in the description below. Um, some of the positives I will say about this is, cosmetically, this is very nice and it's very clean. Um, granted, yes, the priming pommel does kind of take away from the aesthetic of it. However, if you wanted to do something along the lines of I don't know, let's say a Mad Max or a post-apocalyptic build, uh, this would actually be a very, very good base to work off of because you can just gut this thing, take this out so that it's non-functional, and just have your, you know, your break action so that you can eject shells and be all like, you know, Mad Max cool or, uh, you know, Soul Survivor cool or something like that. But, yeah, I mean... Um, also, this is $40. Uh, where I said I would pay $40 for that one, but that's because it only comes with the six shells and you can't get any more of it. I Again, I have plans for that, so, I mean, I, I would still rather pay $40 for that than, you know, the 60 that I did. Uh, but $40 for this, I could take it or leave it. Um, if it was me, I would have probably done this for 30, uh, but f an extra 10 bucks really isn't too much. Um, an extra 20, that's a lot. 
Um, but yeah, price wise, it's not bad. Um, like I said, I would probably do this for 30, but that's just me. And what do I know about business? But you know, either way. Uh, but yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it for this one. Um, so if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this, or as I posed in the last video, what's your favorite, uh, foam flinging shotgun, uh, in the hobby, either manufactured or 3D printed, whichever, I'll let you decide. Let me know in the comments below. I love reading them all. And, oh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are going to be doing all of our silliness that's going to be coming out this summer. Because I know you can't see it because it's off camera, but my schedule has got like about, like almost a dozen things on it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, and also uh, P.O. Box, Snail Mail. Love reading letters. It's nice. It's a lost art. Um, but again, thank you all for joining me for this one. I will see you guys next time. Later. Okay, so before I actually get to my final thoughts on this particular blaster, um, I just wanted to point out one thing, and that is something that Amazon... I mentioned in my last video that Amazon is really now pissed me off because when I'm looking for certain things to review, um, if they happen to be some kind of a knockoff or third party, you know, a, not a brand name type of thing, um, I, you know, look for at least if it's not going to be a performance piece, I want it to at least be a cool looking piece, uh, like something along the lines of the 1887 I've wanted so badly, but I get this message. And I've gotten that on like a bunch of things. Like I've looked for some sawed off shotguns and I am met with this. However, when you look for this on Amazon, and this is the link that I got directly from Oswu, uh, which will be down in the description below, I get this. Now, what really annoys me is when I asked Amazon about that, they said, oh, we don't know, we, we, this is the first time we've seen this, blah, 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 blah. which really pissed me off because I got that same exact answer from uh, Saturn when I told them my ion was having weird issues, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, so when I asked Amazon, why am I getting this? Oh, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it's the seller's problem. They, they can't send it to you for some reason. Um, with their country's restrictions or whatever. I'm like, but no. What? I'm like, no, this can't be. Like, it's on random things that, like, I can order this, but for some reason I can't order this, which is the exact same thing. You know, like, what's going on? Oh, well, uh, if it was fulfilled by Amazon, you would be able to order it, and that's a load of crap because, again... This is giving me that error message. And this was sent to me directly by the seller. This came to me directly from Oswu. So it's not their problem. It's Amazon's problem. And Amazon refuses to tell me why I can't get certain things. I don't know if maybe it's some law or regulation on New Jersey's books, which honestly is the most dumbest thing in the world, but whatever. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, if you happen to know why something like that keeps popping up, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, I'm really curious because I don't want to have to ask my friends up in Massachusetts or Clowney out in like the, all the way out in the boonies of PA. Hey, I want to get this. Amazon won't ship it to New Jersey because both Amazon and New Jersey suck. Um, can I have it shipped to you? And then I'll let me know how much it is and I'll give you money to ship it to me since they don't want it um, you know and kind of go at it from there because that's just annoying <sighs> content creation is exacerbating but anyway my final thoughts on this so I do want to address one elephant in the room regarding this particular design of blaster. Um, if anyone is familiar with the gecko, um, you know, it was designed by a community member who is pretty well, a very, very, very good designer. 
when it comes to uh, things like this. Um, if you know what the Lizzie is, you know, and let's just say same thing happened with this. Um, if you're curious to, as to what I'm talking about, uh, go take a look at the FOMA nature. Um, granted, there are, you know, it's kind of like a water under the bridge at this point for this, um, or at least as I have been told, but I did want to address that elephant. Um, so, you know, reminder, I did not pay for this. This was sent to me for review. So, um, that aside, I have to say this isn't terrible. Um, and it, it doesn't pay me to say that, but there are things that go against this that could have been addressed if it wasn't for the fact that this was Gecko. Because with what my idea is for my full-length shotgun, you could have easily have implemented into this thing. Um, and by that I mean when you break open the barrels to load the shells, having that priming bar here so that you can push it down all the way and then load in or um, load two individual uh, plunger tubes instead of the, just the one massive plunger with the plunger pommel here. Uh, it took me a while to remember what the hell I wanted to call this thing. Uh, you also would have been able to eliminate the switch here at that point and actually have implemented the dual stage trigger on this. Uh, but also at that point, it would have been at least, to me, a bit more functionally pleasing. Because um, while I do like the little trigger in there to pop open the, uh, the breech, uh, 